morning, everybody. It is a wonderful Wednesday morning. It's wonderful Wednesday when we can, we can make a difference in somebody's life. And I hope today, if you are tuning in, you will pick up the phone and call your neighbors, call your friends and say, hey, if you've got granddaughters, if you have grandchildren, you might want to watch this program because this is a program that probably affects the younger audience. And I want to welcome my guest, Ms. Pat Page, who is the director of the Pregnancy Center yes. in Jasper. And it's been there how many years? 30 years. 30 years. I realized how old I was when she and I started talking because Mary Ellen Childry, who I adored, got me involved in it years and years ago. And it was just crazy because I realized 30 years ago. I know. You know, because I, 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 I was like, <laughs> 30 years, yeah. it's crazy. How many lives have you saved and changed in 30 years? Can you imagine that? No, I really can't. I mean, I got to meet Mary Ellen when I first came to the center. Mm -hmm. We used to and be And for y'all who don't know, Mary Ellen died of cancer. Yes. Yeah, and, and boy, did she want to live. Yes. Boy, did she want to she live. She was a fighter. Yeah, and, and made such a difference in the time she had here on Earth. Yeah. Yes, I met her... Um, early on when I came on board and I knew that she had been sick. Um, but we used to be called Pickens Pregnancy Center. Mm -hmm. That might be what people know us as. Right. And then um, I became director just a couple of years after I started. So this I'm in my 15th year uh -huh. and we've had some amazing leaders from the past. Um, Phyllis Smith, uh, Carol Hutchinson uh, were directors prior to my mm -hmm. coming. But I will tell you that I have seen such growth um, not even to mention the lives that have been saved, but the families who have been able to learn about parenting mm -hmm. and childbirth and raising a baby. And the and the, you wake up one morning and you're like, I had a positive test. Yikes! We've got a baby on the way. Now what? Yeah. So dads can think, I'm going to be a dad. I'm going to be a mom. Mm -hmm. um, and our average age, it's interesting. Our average age is 25 to 35 now. Really? Yes. We're wow. seeing a lot. And it used to be 17 to 19. Yes. Uh, often going to college, you might be in a lifestyle that you weren't used to when you were at home, and you come home from college your first quarter, and oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. Or you're graduating high school, and you go somewhere for a beach weekend right. with your friends, and you a come home pregnant. Yeah. yeah. A one night stand. <clears throat> a one night stand. So. Well, and a lot of moms, unfortunately, not just moms, but girls are able to get on birth control mm -hmm. very easily. Mm -hmm. And they're, it's easy to get the morning after pill, mm -hmm. like at a drugstore. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that, it, that doesn't mean you're not emotionally and physically struggling after you have, if you decide to abort your baby. Mm -hmm. That's not the end of it. You carry that with you. Oh yeah. Um, but we're there for also hope and healing. Mm -hmm. That's not the end of your life. It's not how you start off, it's how you end up. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason we've got older moms right now is because maybe they got pregnant and had a baby and they were raising a child while they were a child. Mm -hmm. And now that child's grown up and they think, I need to, I want to start over. I'm only in my 30s. I want to do it right. I w I've met a new person or I'm married now and I want to establish a good home. Mm -hmm. And they've matured and they've thought through what it means to have a family. And I will say, as a young mom, I brought these. Oh. And <clears throat> these are my Angela's shoes. And I've, I've brought these before. I wouldn't take a million dollars for these. You know how you have things in your life that are mm. just forever? Well, when I got married, and you think about this, I didn't have to get married. I wasn't pregnant when I got married. I was, nothing was wrong when I got married. I got married and I <laughs> married a man who said, I really don't want kids. And I said, oh, no. what? And he said, well, I just don't want kids. I, I don't want kids to muddle up things. And I was like, what? Well, <laughs> I was taking Orthonovum 1, the birth control. birth control. And five months after we were married, darn, that pill didn't work. And about eight months after we'd been married, I began to feel that queasiness and that craziness of, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. Now, at that period of time, mm. will you show me what I was carrying? Yes. This, Tell me a little bit about this. This is the actual size of a 10 to 12 week old baby in the womb. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people will get an abortion at about this far along. Right. You know, and they don't realize that 
the baby is formed, completely mm -hmm. formed. Mm -hmm. And you can hold this in the palm of your hands. You might not be able, you don't feel the baby, you're not getting, the baby's not kicking or Right, or I was moving. feeling a queasiness, well, but that was all. that's part of yeah. the pregnant hormones kicking in. Yeah. But the heart is beating, mm -hmm. at, you know, at this stage. The eyelashes, the nervous system, um, all of the organs are there and all that's left is just growth mm -hmm. for the next six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if people could actually know that this is actually the, the size that you were in your mother's womb. Yeah. And you know, Psalm 139 is very clear that Jesus uh, is clear. God, God says, I knit you together in your mother's womb and you are precious to me. Mm -hmm. So we tell our girls, do you realize how valuable you are to God? Because he knit you together mm -hmm. Knitting involves, you know, work, sti work yes. and stitches, yes. and we're each unique, and we're each valued in the sight of God, mm -hmm. and it's a miracle. A birth is really Absolutely. a miracle. Absolutely. So many people can't have children, and all it takes for some is just to wash your laundry together, and you're pregnant, mm -hmm. because you can <laughs> see very easily. Yeah. But each, each of us have such value in the eyes of the Lord. You know, so. when, when that happened with me, my idea was, okay, the pills didn't work. I'm pregnant. He's going to be happy. He's finally going to be happy. Okay. Yeah. It didn't happen. Aww. And he just kept saying, you need to do something about this. And at that time, abortion was not legal because we're talking, when did Roe versus Wade? 73. Okay. This was 1969. Abortion oh, was yeah. not legal. Yeah. And so I said, well, we're going to have a baby. And he said, we're not having anything. And I said, yeah, we are. And I was standing, I'll never forget it. We lived on Monroe Drive in Atlanta. And I was standing there cooking one day, and a friend of his came home with him from work and was going to eat supper with us. And his friend looked at me and said, oh, you're expecting, because I had that little baby bump. And Ronnie said, she's not expecting anything. And I thought, yeah, I am. This is your baby, yeah, too. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and, and it wasn't, you know, I knew who the daddy was. I was married to him. It wasn't anything weird. And I kept thinking, and he, he was raised by two of the greatest Southern Baptist Christian amazing people mm. in the world, but he did not have their beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so I kept saying, Ronnie, we're going to have a baby. And he said, well, you do what you want to, but I said no kids. I said, okay. So um, I went through the pregnancy, never seeing a doctor, never seeing a doctor, mm. because that would have meant yeah. that this was going to be real. And so I just said, I'll get through this. I'll deal with this. I'll get through this. I'll deal with this. I wore, y'all are going to laugh. I wore a size seven tight <laughs> white Levi's then. Now, right now, my arm <laughs> could wear a size seven tight white Levi's. And I can remember the day that I had to unbutton my Levi's because that baby was growing. And I said, I'm going to have a baby and we're married and we're going to get through this. The night that I went into delivery, I called my Aunt Louise who took me to the hospital. She took me to Grady Memorial Hospital in Atlanta. And for you who, people who have never been to Grady Memorial Hospital, if that won't traumatize you, there ain't yes. nothing in this world that traumatize you. <laughs> I'm a young mom. I was just about to turn 19. I was married. My husband was in a bar with another woman the night I gave birth. And I gave birth to this beautiful blue-eyed baby girl on Christmas Eve, alone with my aunt. And um, there I was. That's incredible. In Grady Memorial Hospital. That was the a The first time I'd seen woman, a doctor. Absolutely. The first time I'd seen a doctor was when they went to deliver this baby. She was um, stuck. They wanted to use forceps. I said, no, she'll come. It'll, it'll come when it gets ready. And after about 23 hours of screaming my lungs out, I said, <laughs> okay. Help. And they said, we want to use forceps. I said, no, 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 she'll be okay. I was out in the hall at Grady Memorial Hospital. They were so packed. They had no operating room available. She starts coming out in the hall at Grady Hospital. They jerk me into an operating room. They grab her out. And the moment that baby was there with me, there was no question that oh, I was going to fight her. Ronnie until the rest of my life. There's your water. Thank you. I was going to fight Ronnie till the rest of my life. Of course. And so she was born at 2.22 a.m. At about 7.30 that morning, which would have been Christmas Day, and I'll never forget this, a woman of Chinese descent walked into my room and said, Good morning. And I said, Good morning. And I thought, Who is she? And she had a notebook with her. And she said, um, I'd like to talk to you about the adoption. 
And I said, what? <laughs> oh, my word. And she said, well, your husband contacted us and said that you wanted to put your baby up for adoption. And I'm all for adoption. If you want to give birth and give your child up, I, I say do it. Because if you think you're not prepared to raise it, please, for God's sake, let somebody else yes. take the baby. You should have seen me in that Chinese woman's conversation. I said, no, ma'am. No, I'm not interested. And, and I will say this, y'all would have died laughing. Our friend Jack Conley came to the hospital to see me when he found out that the baby had been born. And he walked in my room and he said, Sherry, how will I know which one's yours? And I said, Jack, she's the only white baby in the nursery. Because I was at yes. Grady Memorial Hospital. Yes, you were. And I had the only white baby born that day. And he said, Oh, okay. So he goes down there and she's this bald headed, blue eyed, precious baby. My husband still hasn't been there. And that night, which would have been the day after Christmas, as that was the day I was actually dismissed from the hospital, he comes into the hospital room at three o'clock in the morning, drunk as a skunk. And the nurse said, it's after visiting hours, but he was making a scene, so we're gonna let him come in, da 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 da. Couldn't get by with any of this today. So he comes in there and he said, well, you're not keeping that baby. And I said, yes, I am too. And he said, well, I told you no kids. And I said, well, I'm sorry. We had a six foot boa constrictor in the living room in a cage that he had, but I couldn't bring home a baby. Are you serious? I know. Yeah, are you serious? The value of life was not important. Not to important him. to him mm -hmm. at all, at all, never was. Mm -hmm. I stayed with this man until Angela was 11 months old, and I left him with a powder box full of $100 bills, and I got them because every time he would go out with another woman, he would give me $100 and tell me to take, take that baby and go shopping. Take that baby and that go baby. shopping. That baby. Yeah. And go shopping. So I saved all those $100 bills, and when I moved to Jasper, I had 18 $100 bills in an mm -hmm. evening in Paris powder box. <laughs> So his, his having a thing for blondes and his having a thing for running around with other women actually got me to this area. So That's I thank incredible. him every day for it Yeah, God because had a plan. It, it turned he my sure life did. around. And wow. I came up here because mother lived in Tate then. And I didn't want to raise my child in Atlanta alone. And I knew that we were going to end up divorced mm -hmm. because I wasn't going to put up with a whole lot much more. And I just looked back and I said, this is truly God yes. because the weak me would have said, okay, I'm going to do a back alley yeah, abortion. But I just, I had some strength that I didn't know I had. Yeah, yeah. And anybody who knew my beautiful daughter, Angela, oh my gosh, what what a talent, what a beauty, what a wonderful heart, what a wonderful I know. person. What would you ever do without her if you had gone through with that? Oh, yeah. Once you have that baby, you think, how could I ever have thought mm -mm. that I didn't need this child and yeah. this child was not meant for me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, God gives gifts good gifts to people. Oh yeah. And children are definitely a gift from the Lord and that was your gift. That was my gift. And and I, I kept thinking he'll come around, he'll come around. And he, even he, seeing her he did he, not. He did not. And sadly later in life she looked exactly like her father. Mm -hmm. So if you think I didn't have a hard time with that, she was blonde, blue eyes, da da, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going, okay, God this is a funny joke because you made <laughs> yeah. me look at my ex every, every single day. day of her life. But um, as she got older, she tried to build a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. There are some men who weren't meant to be fathers. He was one of those. Mm -hmm. My father, my biological father was one of those. Mm -hmm. He, I was the second of four children he had. I was the only female and the only one that he never even met. And I begged to meet him, to spend time with him. I spent time with his parents, but he always said it was inconvenient because he had a new wife and she was pregnant. And it wouldn't be good to bring mm -hmm. me into the picture mm -hmm. then, you know, it's like. You know, people that aren't good. raised with a father. It's tough. Are, especially men, if they don't have a good father image and role, a lot of them end up in prison mm -hmm. because they don't feel like they have any worth or any value and they're acting out on that disconnect that they have. Mm -hmm. And women, Women, that's the first man in their life is oh, their yeah. daddy. And if they don't have that man in their life, it leads to all kinds of promiscuity, searching for someone to love mm -hmm. you. You mm -hmm. know, we've had girls come to the center that they just want somebody to love them. Mm -hmm. They just want somebody mm -hmm. to say they're beautiful. Yeah. And they just want somebody to go to bed with them and then yeah. they have a baby and then the guy's not there. And so in your condition back in the day when you found out you were pregnant, 
so many women say to us, I wish I'd known that there was a center available mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to help me, but you had nobody. I have nobody. You didn't have a resource in mm -hmm. your life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but God instilled in you that desire to continue to have that baby because you knew it was a gift. It was a gift. So that's and, and it was crazy because then I worried because I was taking orthonovum one and then I thought, what if my child has birth defects because I took birth control pills. Right. While I was pregnant, I took birth control pills. Because you didn't know you were pregnant. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know I was pregnant. I just thought, mm -hmm. well, I was feeling weird, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it was crazy because she was healthy. And they didn't have ultrasounds back then. No. And, and I wasn't going to go to a doctor no. because then I would be admitting that I was really got, got myself pregnant. Oh, I heard that every <laughs> you day. Got you got yourself pregnant. And All I looked by at yourself. him and I said, yes, I did. Yes, oh. I did. I got myself pregnant. So. I think you had a part in this. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you know, that leads me to talk about our fatherhood program mm -hmm. is because we developed a fatherhood program with a, one of our men at the center named Doug that God brought to us. He has worked with young men for years and years. And we begin to see more daddies coming in with their girlfriends, fiancés, wives. And for whatever reason, they started taking an interest in becoming a good father. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them would say, I, didn't, I wasn't raised with a father, but I want to be a good dad to this mm -hmm. baby. But I don't know anything about raising children, mm -hmm. um, how to support my wife in her pregnancy how to be a hands-on and love my child. Mm -hmm. um, so we have an amazing program for dads and they can come to the center when the moms come or when their girlfriends come for their classes and we have a one-on-one -on -one male advocate that can talk mm -hmm. to him. Now, as they come, not only are they learning how to be a good dad, but they're able to earn baby bucks, mm -hmm. which is what our program is about, is you come in, we have earn while you learn, mm -hmm. we have baby bucks that you can use in the Angel Babies Boutique, and you use these to buy things that you need for your child. Mm -hmm. You can save them up for a car seat, you can save them up for strollers, a bed, whatever you need. The more times you come and take classes, the more baby bucks you get. Right. And while you're there, if if you're pregnant and you come into the center, you get to go into the mommy store mm -hmm. and you get to pick out, oh, right cool. now the backpacks are the big thing. Oh, how cool. Because you know, dads can carry these around yeah, yeah, and take care of the yeah, kid instead yeah. of a fancy flowery diaper bag. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So in the mommy store, you get to go in this cute little store and every time you come, not only do you get baby bucks, but you get to pick out things. Mm -hmm. um, these are just some examples. Oh, sweet. And all these are brand new uh -huh. because you're building. It's um, like you're giving yourself a baby shower That's exactly every time what I you, say. Yeah. That is exactly <laughs> what I say. So you get outfits. You oh know, you can, gosh, you, get, you can get new clothes. Oh, my There's gosh. There's things for the little guys. Oh, my gosh. Look at this tiny Look little. Look at this one. I know it. Oh, I love this. Look at these tiny little things. But you start oh building up gosh. a wardrobe. For your children so from cute. newborn up to yeah. nine months. Wow. And you get diapers. This and you is get my wipes. favorite. I love Isn't it. Isn't that precious? Pink and black is my colors. That's well, so I do cool. too. That, that is look. so cool. So anyway, you get diapers and wipes and baby bottles and all kinds of things. And you start putting them in your diaper bag. Yeah. And right before you give birth, um, you take your diaper bag home and you're all ready to come home from the hospital. That is awesome. So, and it's, this has been provided by our donors. Our donors uh -huh. make it possible mm -hmm. to our advocates go through training. Um, we have be a beautiful facility right there at Samaritan Way when you're going to the thrift store and Cares mm -hmm. and Good Sam's. We're just right there off of Church Street. But I just love that we can support these moms. There's a sense of pride to say, I wasn't just given this, I earned this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through the Earn While You mm -hmm. Learn program. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the dads get baby bucks. They can come pick out clothes for their little yeah. guy, person. How cool is that? I yeah, know, yeah. and I just, I think it's one of the best programs out there because as we all know, pregnancy is not a problem. Mm -mm. There's mm -mm. so many other problems that we have in life that are connected to that pregnancy that may be unplanned, maybe it was planned, but housing is a problem. Money for gas, how am I going to raise this baby? Um, are you going to be in my life? Are you going to help me? Do I have a support team? Mm -hmm. So the women at the center and the men we are your support because mm -hmm. most women will get an abortion because they do not have a support team. Right. That is the number one reason. And it is a miracle that you did not follow through with that. You didn't have a supportive husband. Mm -hmm. You were afraid to talk about it with anybody. Mm -hmm. You were afraid mm -hmm. to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. You would have been a prime candidate this day and age oh, for yeah. a woman to give up her child. Oh yeah. 
So. And, and today, one of the things that we wanted to share, and I shared this with you, this is the bracelet that I came home from the hospital with, and you can't see this, but my name has been Sherry Dobbs since I was five. But I was adopted, and we have some pictures we're going to share. If Trace can, if you can get these pictures up, wow. we have a picture the day that I was born, and my name was Cheryl Douglas. It was actually Nancy Cheryl Douglas, and um, it was there. There I was at Downey Memorial Hospital in Gainesville, and I was born Nancy Cheryl Douglas because my mom had been in the Florence Crittenden home for unwed mothers, and at eight months pregnant. She decided that she was going to come back to Gainesville, Georgia and bite the bullet and keep her child, not give me up wow. for adoption. And she created a story to tell my grandmother that she had married Roy Douglas, who was a gentleman that she met in Virginia. And she didn't marry him and she wasn't married to him. But somehow, and I don't know how mama <laughs> pulled this off, my last name was Douglas, and on my birth certificate, my original birth certificate, it said Roy Douglas on it. So, not my dad. But anyway, oh, Mama wow. could not face my grandmother in the year I was born and say, Mama, I'm expecting. So she went away to the Florence Crittenden Home for Unwed Mothers before Granny knew she was pregnant. And she stayed until she was eight months. She came home eight months pregnant with a 50 cent piece in her pocket and on a bus that came to Hall County, mm -hmm. Georgia and Gainesville, Mama got off the bus and, and told her mom, oh, I got married, but it didn't work out. Now this is our <laughs> Zanna, and Zanna is one of those miracle babies. Oh, beautiful. And Zanna is like everybody's uh, entertainer because Zanna mm -hmm. loves to laugh, she loves to giggle, she loves to, if you, if you like watching YouTube, you get to see lots of Zanna <laughs> because Zanna just rules the roost. and. Uh, Zanna is one of those children that might not have been had her mom decided to end her life. Wow. Her father passed, and um, so being a single mom, you know, you just do the best that you can, and she chose life, and I'm so That's right. thankful. That's awesome. I mean, this, this child has made our family amazingly happy, amazingly the structured. Joy that she we all, we yeah. all, what can we do to help her? There she is on the set. Oh, Zanna great. has been raised by our viewers because our viewers always stop me and say, where's Zanna? You know? And everybody loves her. And this is that choice that her mom mm. made. You know, mm -hmm. if you're a single young mom, you have, you have, I think you only have one choice. Yeah. And I think that it is the choice to give life and to give life. It is. And and that's my mom and I. Oh, that's precious. That's my mom and I. And, and an I can say... Story. Yeah. I was, mother was not a perfect mother, but I never doubted how much my mother loved me. I never doubted how much my mother loved me. And mm -hmm. um, Love I, will get you through life yeah. when you know you are yeah. loved. Yeah. Yes. We used to make fun of it and so I would tell her that she loved my brother more than me and she'd say, how can I possibly love my, your brother more than you? And I said, I don't know, but I know you do. <laughs> you know. On that note, yeah. one of the saddest things I ever heard was I met a lady who um see that that's that's the week i was adopted oh that is that's so the week i was adopted my, my new sister teapot. and i yeah you're having a tea party yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's the day i was the year i was adopted that is so precious yeah. yeah well like the like you're talking about feeling love this girl that i met said that her mother always reminded her and there's my beautiful daughter that everybody oh, knew that. and loved yep yep she was so loved, so loved. That's a great picture. Yeah, yeah. Well, the mother told her daughter that you were supposed to be aborted. I tried to abort you, and you lived. You were not supposed to be here. Can you imagine growing up all your life knowing no. that we tried to abort you and no. we couldn't, and here you are, yeah. and knowing that you weren't wanted and you weren't loved, but somehow they tolerated you and they raised you? Wow. See, that's just the opposite of what you're saying, is that you knew you were loved. Nobody ever said, you know, this wasn't a good situation. You never told your daughter, we didn't really want you. You've ruined our marriage. You know, we didn't want, I mean, what does that do to a human being to know that you weren't wanted? I know what it did to me because I know when my father 
rejected me all of my life. I know what it did to there me, and I made every single. You, I was laughing when you were naming what happens when you want to be your daddy's girl and your daddy's not there. I made all those mistakes, and I was always. And my sister used to say this. She'd say, "You're the overachiever because." If your biological father ever showed up, you always wanted to be everything he would want you to be. And she said, why is he so important to you? And I said, I don't know. But in my mind, yeah. I had to be something that he would be proud of. Yes. He was nothing for me to be proud of. But in my mind, he was my you father. You wanted his affirmation. I was the yeah. only kid out of four that even looked like him. I was the only kid out of four that sometimes acted like him. And I was the only kid out of four that honestly did everything for everybody. The rest of them kind of went their own way. And like I have one brother who mm -hmm. wanted nothing to do with any of us. I have one brother who my daddy idolized who died young. And then I have another brother who I adore and he's, he's amazing and I'm so thankful for him. But, mm -hmm. but I was the strong one. And if I hadn't been the strong one, because I know what that daddy-daughter syndrome does to you. Yes. It blew my mind because oh, no. every man that I was ever around, I was looking for somebody who would love me as much as my father should That's have right. loved me. I was looking That's for, right. and, and, and. That's normal. And, and I hate to say it, but it, you create a problem because that father's rejection, you never get over it. That you is never so get true. over it, never. And you know, on this earth, the approval of our fathers and mothers mean everything. But, you know, in, in Scripture, when God says, I'll be a father to the fatherless, mm -hmm. that is a real oh, yeah. encouraging oh, yeah. verse to know yeah. that even though I might not have had my father, he can be my heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Not my earthly father, but he will meet those deepest, darkest, loneliest needs that you have that you can know my heavenly father created me and he loves me and he has purpose for me. Right. So that it's it takes a while to kind of wrap your head around the fact oh, that yeah. I have tough. a heavenly father. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are things that um, we love to work through with our clients. They have they come in with multiple problems: mm -hmm. the loneliness, the depression, multifamily uh, household. You know. And budget in today's problems. world, I would say the budget yeah. would be the biggest problem ever. It is. Because you it can is. get that support team from y'all. You yes, can get we can talk about budgets. Yeah. And and I told you about a special young woman that has tried and tried and tried to get help and she's getting no help from anybody. Yeah. And she's really struggling. And she's struggling, she's working and she's going to college and she's doing everything she can. She gets no help from our federal government, which makes me so mad. If yeah. anybody wants to sign my bond, <laughs> I'll probably be in a jail before long because it makes me so mad. I want to go down to the, I want to go to the Capitol and protest. I know. I want to protest the women who deserve the help aren't getting it and those who are crossing our borders. And if you get me started, then we'll have a big fight going oh, on. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. getting $10,000 EBT cards. They're getting debit cards. They're getting hotels. They're getting buses. They're getting airplane rides. Yeah. And I have a single mom raising a beautiful Trying child to work hard to who do can't that. get any yeah. help. Can't, yeah. get, can't even get food stamps. Well, I would have those girls reach out to us. We have a lot of resources. We know our limits. We know what we can and what we can't do. Mm -hmm. And if we can't serve you at the center, we're going to refer you to someone who can help you. We have a whole list of, of contacts. I think and daycare so, is the one thing that they really, really need help with because if you're a mom right. going to college, okay, you have a high school diploma, you're going to college, and you're paying $165 a week for daycare, what does that leave you to live on? Mm -hmm. Very, very little. Mm -hmm. So then the mom who decided to keep the child is saying, I can't even feed this child right. because I'm having to pay You make a good daycare. decision and you're suffering for yes, it. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah, I know. Well, I would love to see what resources we have that we could point her to. Yeah. Um, because I know that there are programs. I know Chat Tech from the past, I feel like that they had a program where if you're, work, if you're going to school, they can help offset the cost of daycare. Mm -hmm. So I know there's programs out there. Well, I hope so because yeah. she's doing college and now she's stressed because she already has a $27,000 debt with college cost. And I said, we got to figure out a way around this. We, we've got to figure out some help. Sure. So we need 
a grant or we need something because yes. she said, should I quit college? I can't keep incurring this debt. I can't keep doing this. Mm -hmm. Unlike many people who say, oh, just get the debt and somebody will wipe the debt claim for me. Well, mm -hmm. she feels like it's her debt, you know. Yeah, so responsible. She's really, really yeah. struggling. And and I said, you're not quitting college. You're No, mm -hmm. no, no. We're, we're going to find a way to help you. Well, she'll you. look back so, and be glad she got a degree or something under her belt. That's what I told Living her. forward, she'll yeah. be able to have yeah. money to help raise yeah. that child. That's what I told her. I want to so. do this. This is so funny. <laughs> oh, when that. we think of the dish that my mama loved me so much, she got me the sweetest dish. And you said your babies had that. This holds two tiny babies. It sure does. And it was only enough to feed one child. And and I got to show you all this. I don't know. I don't think. Did we show that picture of me in this coat? This coat. My mama bought me this coat. So when sweet. I was two and a half years old. And I said, I want to have a picture of Vanna made in this coat. It's because sweet. this coat is older than dirt. But I want to press it and have a picture of Zanna made in my coat that was mine when I was a little girl. And Mama took me to the Piedmont Pharmacy every day when she'd get off work. She would sit me at the Piedmont Pharmacy because she said, Honey, you're so cute that somebody's going to recognize you and want you in movies. <laughs> I said, Mama, are you crazy? So we would go to the Piedmont Pharmacy every day, Aww. and I'd sit there on a bar stool, and, and I think we've got that picture. Trace, can you pull that picture up of me on that bar and stool? Here you are on your TV show. Was, yeah, yeah. Well, and I said, be proud. Mama, and, and you know, Mama didn't live. That's me. with uh, the, There's my coat laying that. on that. Look at that. Yeah, like yeah. Shirley Temple from yeah, a distance yeah. with dark hair. Yeah, and then this that everybody thinks it's crazy that I still have Mama's so outfit. Cute. But Mother made this. Uh, for herself, and she wore it when she was expecting in 1956. So you think about that. That's beautiful. Isn't that pretty? And this is what I think is so funny about the difference in maternity clothes. Look at this. Oh, how the, my goodness. How the, the belly is open, and then the, the shirt covers it. it covers Isn't that crazy? <laughs> And you she did this from a McCall's pattern. You weren't bound pattern. up in there. No. You were all hanging out. No. And she, she did this from a McCall's, McCall's pattern. pattern. But isn't that cool? Oh, and, wow. And when we think That's about so today, sweet. you know, um, there are so many moms out there that are struggling. And they're like, you know, I've already got two kids I can't afford. And here I am pregnant again. Well, there's a way. There's a way. Mm -hmm. There's a way. That's what we offer. We offer um, tangible help, which is things you're going to need for the baby, things you're going to need for you. We even have some maternity clothes in our Angel Babies Boutique. Mm -hmm. um, but we also offer spiritual help and spiritual hope because we know that there's no way you're going to be able to raise a baby mm -mm. in this day and age without the hope of the Lord. Yep. And we want to equip you. You know, we want to help you have the tools that you need to be a good parent. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the things that we love to do is we ask our clients what can I pray for you about today? And everybody wants prayer. Mm -hmm. Everybody's mm -hmm. got something that they need prayer for. Sure. But we want to walk with you not only through your pregnancy, but through your parenting. We, um, You can come in until your children are in grade school because mm -hmm. we have over 600 different classes that involve, you know, going through potty training, going through, sleeping through the night. My child has colic. What can I do? My baby... Uh, my toddler wants to sleep with us in our bed. How do I get them to stay in their own bed? Mm -hmm. Those are just real practical things. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I did have a child early on. Maybe I did have an abortion early on and I chose adoption. I, I need help navigating through the feelings I'm having now. Mm -hmm. We want to be there for you no matter what. We're free. We're confidential. We don't report to anybody. We're completely funded by individual donors grants, churches, mm -hmm. our fundraiser every year that we have. What do a big you do banquet. for a fundraiser? We have a banquet every year. Uh -huh. um, it's open to anyone that would like to come. It's free to come. We take up a donation at the end. But we have a lovely dinner. We share, we have people come to share testimonials about how that we've been able to help them, how their life has changed, what we've done for them. Mm -hmm. And we have so many quotes from our clients that say, I never dreamed I could get this kind of help, that people would really listen to me, that people would really care, mm -hmm. that I could earn everything I need for my baby that's on the way. Yeah. Um, and then I can take the bucks and go shop in the angel babies. 
Mm -hmm. Angel Babies is open to the public, so anybody can shop in there. Well, I, I told you, I you, showed you what I bought the other day, yes. and it was like, oh my gosh, and Zana loves to model. She loves to put on shoes, she loves to be pretty. <laughs> she dresses. Just, oh my gosh, so we get all these dresses, and we're changing her clothes and changing, and she loves shoes. Oh my gosh, this is, so we're, we are We're selling Easter dresses oh right gosh, now, so that. your little one would have loved that. Oh, We've got so precious. many Easter clothes right now. But oh the, she would have gosh. put on a little pair of black heels and pranced around. That is around. so cute. And this is like six dollars. Where can so you cute. find a dress for six dollars? Yeah. Anyway, so sh you shop for her. I spent thirty-two dollars <laughs> and I got a bag full, and I was so excited, and she was so excited. Aww. And I said, you know, when we see, and I, I told you this before we came on the air. Pink came out and made a statement: If you're not pro-choice, don't listen to my music. And so I got on Twitter, which is now X, and I sent yeah. a message to her, and I sent a message with a picture of a beautiful child. And I said, this is your abortion. You want people to abort their children. This is the choice that life made. And I could take my picture. I could take my daughter's picture. I could take my great-granddaughter's picture. All of us are here because our mothers chose life. Absolutely. Our mothers chose life. And when I chose life over my husband, he, I mean, literally, that poor Chinese woman is still scratching her head <laughs> because she came in there to fill out the paperwork to take my child. I'm sure. And I said, are you crazy? And she said, oh, no, 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 your husband said, I said, I don't care what my husband said. You're not said. snatching this baby away I from said, me. I said, there is no way I'm giving, well, well, your husband said. I said, shut up. I said, I don't want to hear it. And I became a vicious mm. mother that day. And Protective I said, bear. she is my yep. child yep. and we will deal with this. That's and from awesome. that moment on, I think I knew he wasn't going to change. His life wasn't going to change. But I had a choice to change our lives. That's right. And, and there were times in Angela's life that things were not good at all. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. there were times that she wanted to see her daddy and, and his it's parents. Hard. You know, mm -hmm. his parents were amazing and I adored them. But their son was just... A drunk hussy hopper, <laughs> you know. That's just what he was. You wonder why he would marry and not tell you up front that you know. Okay, I don't want any more children. Oh, he did you know, say the, that. Oh, before but you I, even married. But I th yeah, oh yeah, you I thought, thought oh, you'll, oh, you'll get over once it. Once he finds out we're you know, pregnant, of course, he'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, you know. But, It'll but then again, grow on him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm taking North and Oven one. I wasn't planning to get pregnant because. To be honest with you, I was only 19, and I wasn't ready to have a child. But not ready or not, here she comes. That's right. And I did not say, okay, I'm going to do a back alley abortion no, just like my father it. tried to get my mother to do. I'm just, I'm not going to do it. But today, you, you were concerned about a new medication that I think, I didn't even know it existed. Yeah. But it scares me because today I watched... Um, I'd love to weigh 119, which is what I used to weigh, but I don't. Sure. Reality is I don't. And I eat healthy and I walk a lot and I try to be healthy, but I don't weigh 119. Well, I watched a commercial last night about 1 o'clock this morning, actually, about one of the new fat I drugs that, that mm -hmm. ladies are taking mm -hmm. and they're ending up with pancreatic cancer, mm -hmm. they're ending up with this, they're ending up with that. I don't trust pharmaceuticals. I don't Because either. guess who got rich off COVID? Guess who continues to get rich off COVID? Guess who continues to get rich off women being overweight? No. Those pharmaceutical companies. And then they bring out this thing where if you have any of these cancers and you took that fat shot, then you can be mm -hmm. on this amazing huge lawsuit. This drug that they've just body. introduced yeah. that you can order over the internet. You How do you can. order it? My Fipristone is um, it's a two-step process. Um, you can call. You don't have to have an ultrasound. A doctor doesn't prescribe it. Well, he can pr prescribe it, but y it's all over the phone. It, you don't go in to get an ultrasound and he says, okay, you're, you're 10 weeks, because you're not supposed to take this if you're over 10 weeks pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how many women are being honest to say, oops, I'm over 10 weeks? But it's a two-step process. The first pill stops the progesterone in your body. You can't carry a pregnancy without progesterone. So it stops the progesterone. The next day, you take the second pill, which eliminates the baby. And you can be at home, you could be at school, you could be in the car. Your body's going to go into labor and it's going to expel your baby. Mm -hmm. they, call, they call it the con uh, product of conception, the mm -hmm. POC. Mm -hmm. That is a baby 
And sometimes girls literally will miscarry and they will see a complete baby this size uh -huh. that they have just destroyed. Yeah. And yeah. that is a traumatic thing to go through. I can't get an antibiotic over the phone. No, no. You have to go into a doctor or, you know, and this is destroying life. I can't imagine that they calling, that people are calling this health care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The health for who? Yeah. Whose health? Yeah, yeah. You're destroying the baby. Yeah. You're destroying the woman. Yeah. yeah. And, you know. Get me started about that oh. stupid vice president who just went to the abortion clinic. Oh, my word. She didn't choose to go to babies no, or no. us. Or she didn't choose to go to angel babies. A resource babies. center. She didn't go to a pregnancy center. She no. went to an abortion clinic. Well, here's another thing. It's called the abortion pill reversal, abortion pill rescue. A lot of babies are being saved because what happens with this, if you have taken um, the RU486, which is the same as the, the drug you can get online, and you regret your decision and you took the first pill and you're thinking, what am I doing? I don't want to go through with this. You can get an abortion reversal pill. Wow. Um, there's an 800 number that you can call. There's a helpline. It's abortionpillreversal.com. And what that does is it puts the progesterone back in your body and a lot of babies, I want to say 70% of babies have been saved through this. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure of that number, mm -hmm. but this helpline can get you through possibly saving your right. pregnancy on if you have a second thought that I really don't want to go through with yep. this. Yep. Yep. So, you know, thank the Lord that we have resources out there, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. also if you go through with it, we have abortion recovery at the pregnancy center. We have a couple of women who have had abortions, they've been through recovery, and they're gonna help you get through this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's not the end of the world. And right. we tell our, our girls, it's not how you start off, it's how you end up. Yep. We want you to have hope and help for the future. Mm -hmm. And you know, we don't know what it's doing to your organs, we don't know what it's doing to your body physically, right. emotionally, mentally, what's, what's really happening. So these are scary drugs. These drugs kill people. Mm -hmm. And there's no other. And who's the richest companies yeah, in the world? Pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. 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 They'll tell you anything to yeah. sell you a pill. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be educated. We have to help people get through. And we will answer any of your questions. If you just want to come to the center and you say, I'm pregnant, I'm considering an abortion, what are my options? We will sit down with you. We do not pressure people. You've got to live with your choices, sure. not us. We're going to talk you through. This is what an abortion is. This is what adoption looks like, and this is what parenting yeah. looks like. We and want to help you through it. Adoption is such a great choice. We're going to take yes. a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the possibilities of adoption because not every person out there who's pregnant was destined to be a mom. Not every person out there can handle that crying, screaming baby in the middle of the night. That's and right. and maybe adoption is the answer to you being pregnant. So we're gonna take a commercial break and we'll be right back. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I'm grown up, grown up, in every way, in every way, care and take care of you. I'm grown up and I know you're there. I'm grown up and you know I care. Cause it's you and me and me and, me and, me and you. So when you are okay or not okay, I'll take care of you.
Dreams and City Stuff Don't you think it's time to go Where black bears climb and waters flow Hummingbirds out on the deck Your feet propped up and what the heck Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool making a masterpiece or just making memories writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow whatever you do in life Farmers is here to protect it for all your insurance needs call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge Okay, everybody knows that I am pro-adoption. I am pro-life, I am pro-adoption. I am pro-adoption because I recognize that not every person in the world was cut out to be a parent. Mm -hmm. Certainly not every man in the world is cut out to be a father. If you have addictions, if you have violence, violent tendencies, if you know that you can't be a father, either get your crap together and become a good father or walk away, walk away. And if you're a mom who may have an addiction problem or may have mental instabilities for whatever reason, adoption is yeah, such an amazing provide. choice. If you can't even feed your child and you're struggling to feed yourself, you know, adoption is such a great way to mm -hmm. create a beautiful, loving family. Mm -hmm. And um, open adoption to me would be a little awkward, but it's a possibility because having the biological mom and having the new mom. You know, I've been a stepmom and I can remember that was tough. That's mm -hmm. a little bit different than mm -hmm. being a biological mom and being in the picture. So what do you see working the best? Because we're looking at open adoption, partially adoption and confidential adoption. I would yeah. think the confidential, but then you tell your child at some point, we chose you. Absolutely. You're such a special child Absolutely. because we chose you. There is a network um, that covers nothing but adoptions. And we can refer you if you come to us and you want a confidential adoption. Um, you will meet with someone. It's the Usually the adoptive family pays all the medical bills. They pay mm -hmm. for everything. Mm -hmm. And you have the opportunity to choose your family. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit, there's a good peace of mind, an amazing satisfaction to know that you placed your child in a loving home. Mm -hmm. When that's the biggest sacrifice of all is to place your child right. in a home when you know you cannot do it. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, you can live with that choice. You can't live with the fact that you aborted your child, but you mm -hmm. can live with the fact that you placed your child. Right. We don't ever say give up your baby for adoption. You're not giving up. You're placing them in the mm -hmm. arms of a loving family. Mm -hmm. um, so we have several places that we can have you call. You can have a free consultation and talk with an agency, a caring woman. You can say, look, I, I want to consider this. What, are, what can I talk about? Mm -hmm. And they'll go over all your options with you about how that works. Mm -hmm. um, some people get to want pictures of their child. They might not want that connection, but they want to stay mm -hmm. in touch mm -hmm. with the progression of the growth of their baby. Right. Um, and some don't want it is a confidential, uh, complete, they choose, you're walking away mm -hmm. um, because you're not in a season mm -hmm. of your life where you want to make that choice, right. but you know you want to give birth to this child. Yeah. So it's so difficult now to get newborns because most people are aborting their babies. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And foster ho homes, I'm telling you, there are more foster children than there are homes for these children. Oh, I see and it every And so, day. Um, you know, I know that people think, oh, why do you keep having children and, you know, you can't take care of them and why do you keep, you know, putting them out there because there's nobody that will raise them. There are loving homes that will take in foster children. There are more than we can imagine. Mm -hmm. They just have to be trained to be a foster parent. Mm -hmm. But right now, I think people have to be wise in their choices to begin to be a parent. If you don't want to have to face these struggles, 
abstinence. That's mm -hmm. what God provided is just stay pure, mm -hmm. be abstinent until you take a vow and have a marriage. Not all marriages work out, that's for sure. But don't go around just trying to make a baby and find somebody that loves you. We, we had a client one time where she met a guy online. She made a baby together. They made a baby. He ended up being abusive. She ended up losing her child because she didn't report him in a timely manner. We helped her go through the courts to take parenting classes to get that baby back, and now she's got the baby. She married an awesome man, and they're raising that child together. That's awesome. That's a great story. Yes. We got to experience walking yeah. through that yeah. with her. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we can help you. You can go, you know, a lot of uh, courts say, you know, okay, we're, you can't have visitation until you go through these parenting classes. Mm -hmm. Come see us. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through parenting classes with you mm -hmm. that are court approved. So we can help you if you have a child in defects or you've got to have visitation mm -hmm. and right now you can't have anything but supervised visitation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, come see us and we can help you with your parenting well, classes. We, we don't have but a few minutes, but I want to bring up something that I talked about yesterday. Um, if you see something, say something. Absolutely. There is so much abuse out there. I was at Ingalls one Saturday night pumping gas and I saw a confrontation between a mom and her two small children in the back seat of the car and the guy she was with who, my, my daughters get mad at me because they said, Mom, you profile everybody. Well, he was a druggie. I'll mm -hmm. just say it. He yeah. was a druggie. Yeah. And he was screaming. He was cussing. It was all these bad words over and over and over. And she was cussing. She was screaming. She was saying, you're taking my money, my baby's grocery money, and you're buying drugs. And they're fighting and arguing right there in Ingalls. Well, I wrote down her tag number, but I didn't report her. And ever since then, I've been haunted by that. And I said, if you see something, say something. I know. Save There's those children children's involved. lives. Yeah. Save those children's lives. Yeah. There was one time in my life that I gave my mother an ultimatum, and I said, it's him or me. And my mother chose him, and I left home at just under 16 years old. Wow. And I will never forget it. And I moved only three blocks from home, but I didn't speak to my mom for two years because I was mm -hmm. going to teach her a lesson. Mm -hmm. You're going to do things the way I want them done. Now, I'm the kid. She's the adult. <laughs> but Mother wasn't doing what she should have been doing. So I stood my ground. Didn't get anywhere. <laughs> and I ended up working two jobs, taking care of myself the rest of my life. And, well, you, know, you had to make it work. But I, I said, it's him or me. She said, I'm going to miss you, sugar. Uh, it was there's the hardest the thing ever. Oh, my gosh. It was oh, crazy. Wow. It was crazy, but I made it through that. And after two years, then she and I started, we were okay again. But it was so hard because yes. I had always been her little girl, the, the child she loved, and then she let this man come between us. And it was heartbreaking. Oh, that's terrible. It was heartbreaking. And, and yeah. I said, you know, and I told him, I said, I love you to death, but this isn't going to work. Right. And, and so sometimes moms make the wrong decision. Well, he wasn't in her life more than a year and a half, and then he was gone. And then she and I mended. But moms don't always make the right decisions. No, they don't. But the one thing you have to remember. You gotta get help for that. Love your child. Yes. Love your child enough to give it up if you're not strong enough to raise it. Love your child enough to tell the dad you can't be in his life until you're straight and clean and, and you're good. Love your child enough to give your child a chance. Give and you know, chance. there's so many, we see a lot of angry people that are angry because of those very things. Their parents walked away from mm -hmm. them. Somebody wasn't there for them. Mm -hmm. Somebody hurt them. Anger, lack of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to walk through those things. You've got to get past those because when you're angry, you vent and you take it out on other people, whether it's a helpless child yep. or whether it's your spouse or who mm -hmm. you're living with. Mm -hmm. And anger will end you up in a horrible situation oh, yeah. in life. Yeah. Most people in jail got there because they were angry. Oh yeah, yeah. And so we want to help you walk through your anger management. Mm -hmm. We have, we have counselors that are licensed that we can help you walk mm -hmm. through these things, mm -hmm. because without dealing with our, with our heart, and with the anger and the stuff that we keep inside of us, without dealing with that in a proper way, you're going to go through life destroying it's people along the way. Absolutely. Um, so there's a lot of things that people can do if they want to help us at the center. There's a lot of um, things that the community can do. There's individuals that can do fundraisers for us. You can do 
the baby bottle boomerang. A lot of civic organizations do diaper drives. Mm -hmm. This is spring stroller drives, umbrella mm -hmm. stroller drives. One of our churches does that. Um, provide building and landscaping maintenance. Maybe you just want to come help do some things around the building. Diaper and wipes drive. You can stand in front of Kroger or Walmart with a table. We're collecting diapers and wipes for the pregnancy center mm -hmm. for moms. That's awesome. So it is. Or used clothing. We take used clothing up to size five toddler. Mm -hmm. If you bring a bag I've of got used a bag clothing, in the car. These you are get all a brand discount. New with tags what? Up. These are all brand new with tags. Well, to you take get to twenty. Uh, I think yeah. it's ten or twenty percent. Yeah. Yeah. But every Monday is Grandparent Day. If you're over sixty, you get twenty five percent off. Awesome. Every Monday. Awesome. So awesome. anyway, just and be a monthly donor. You know, yeah. When I get sixty, helps. I'll. <laughs> when you get there, <laughs> yeah, wait right. till you get there. <laughs> yeah, right. But we're just so grateful for yeah. this community. They have yeah. reached out and been such a blessing to us. Do you know we're seeing triple the number of clients that we did just three years ago? Wow. Triple. So people are coming. We're open every day but Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, Monday through Friday, and appointments are preferred. You don't have to wait. Mm -hmm. um, we're there 10 to 5 and then 10 to 3 on Tuesday. So if you want to call and make an appointment, if you want to go to the website, babyontheway.org, mm -hmm. that's how you can find us. We're on Facebook, mm -hmm. and we love to serve this community, and this community loves us. Mm -hmm. They give yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, and we want we want to be a part of giving back. You know, it's funny when you were talking about anger, and, and often um, you say things in anger that you don't mean. You, you ridicule somebody. You scream. You tell them they're of no value. You say, you are nothing, nothing, nothing. Right. And then you that goes into your head, and you believe that. Yeah, you start and, believing and, it. And, my daughter told me one day, she said, i would never seen you broken. And now that I've seen you broken, I don't like that. I don't mm -hmm. like that you let somebody tell you that you're of no value. Beat you down. Yeah, that, that is the hardest thing ever. And so be strong enough that your daughters look at you with strength, mm -hmm. not with, but, but having that dad syndrome. Mm -hmm. I've always, mm -hmm. you know, you make the man happy. You do whatever the man wants. You do whatever. And, and oh, we want to help change that way of we thinking. Do. You know, yeah. we, unresolved conflict is another big problem. There's so many that go through life with unresolved mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. but we want to help you work through that because God has a plan for all of our problems. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just don't know what that looks like or how we really can take hold of that in a tangible way to make this work. But we want to help you walk through it. You can only change yourself. Mm -hmm. You cannot change other people. But I can change my attitude. I can get help from me. Mm -hmm. I have I have the power because of Christ to make decisions that please and glorify him. I don't have to answer for you mm -hmm. or my mm -hmm. parents mm -hmm. or my siblings mm -hmm. or my children. Yeah. I have to answer for yeah. me. And so that's important. Do you important. believe that Satan shows up at your weakest point in life? Oh, he loves to destroy people. Do you he, Yeah, he wants so to. It is so weird to watch him work, you know. Yeah. And and it is like we have to say not today Satan. We have to say not today Satan. And, yes. and when I think about my father, I often, it's a struggle. It's still a struggle. Yeah. That yeah. is so weird that this yeah. many years, he's been dead 22 years. You still are feeling that. I still am angry that I didn't get to yeah. be everything to him. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Well, but, but you can think about what you are able to do. You know, sometimes we live with regrets. Um, but at the same time, we can say, okay, I've learned something from that. Oh, yeah. You can turn around and talk to dads and say, you know how important you are in yes. the life of your children. Yes. Yes. So because you experienced what it was like not to have it. I did. So you can empower, you, you can empower dads to step up and try to dads be what they step, step up. up. Play. It is time for us to step out of here. <laughs> step the out. Hour's gone. The well, hour's gone. Thank you so much. That and y'all, Angel thank Baby's you. Boutique is right down there as you turn to go to Cares to go to the thrift store in Jasper. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. Check them out. Volunteer for them. Make donations to them and make a difference in the life of this tiny, tiny child. This mm. tiny, tiny yes. child. If you need help, pick up the phone and call the Pregnancy Crisis Center. There you go. We'll see you again soon. Thank you so God, much. Thanks for thank having you, me. Thank you. Thank this you. was great.